So could you please introduce yourselves? Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Myself, Manish Chandu. Okay. And I have completed my graduation in engineering domain okay. of electrical and electronics. Okay, fine. How to maintain a relation high available and scalable? To uh, maintain an application high available and scalable, we can configure auto scaling and load balance for our application. Mm -hmm. uh, the auto scaling will make it highly available. Okay. And uh, the auto scaling will make it highly scalable, whereas our uh, load balancer will make it highly available to many users. So fine. So what are the components in VPC we have? The components VPC are uh, mainly subnets. Okay. So what are the types of subnets we have? There are two types of subnets, public mm -hmm. subnet and private subnet. Private uh, subnet. Where a public subnet will have an internet connection mm -hmm. and a private subnet does not have. Private subnet does not have internet connection. By so, default. Okay. What are the other components? The other components of VPC are internet gateway and NAT gateway. Mm -hmm and uh, security groups mm -hmm. and ACL. Fine. So what is different between peering and uh, transit? The peering connection should be made to every VPC. For example, if we take three VPCs, for, uh, to talk with uh, one VPC, the other VPC should be peered. That is basic connection. Mm -hmm. So if we want to talk to a third VPC, these two VPCs should be peered with the third VPC. Mm -hmm. But it is only one way. Whereas in transit gateway, we can make a uh, centralized gateway where the three VPs will be connected internally. Fine. So how do you protect your application? We protect our application through web application firewall. Mm -hmm. What is web application firewall? How it's going to be useful? What uh, uh, From what it's going to protect your application? The web application firewall will uh, can protect our application by using geo geolocation where uh, any users from one location can uh, can be accessed or cannot be accessed or okay so you need to say that it, it, it will be protected from malicious and unauthorized traffic uh, what are the types of storage classes we have the types of in s3 sir s3 storage classes in s3 we have standard uh, standard class standard ia uh, that is uh, intelligent ia s3 gla glacier glacier deep archive one zones okay so, what are the uh, EBS uh, types types of EBS we have? Types of EBS we have uh, GP3 SSD and uh, which is subtypes of GP3 GP2. Okay. And uh, IOPS, uh, it is mainly used by uh, dev engineers. Okay. Because it has maximum throughput IOPS. Okay. Input output per okay. second. Okay. And uh, magnetic HDD. Okay. Which is uh, very slow compared to GP SSD. Okay. And the last type is cold HDD. Fine. Open HDD and cold HDD. Fine. So different between EBS and EFS? Uh, EBS full form is elastic block storage where uh -huh. other uh, files or any any type of storage will be stored in chunks. Whereas e e and it has a limited storage value. Okay. Where EFS is an elastic file system, it has uh -huh. unlimited storage between. It will be connected through uh, multiple EC2 instances and okay. it can be shared the files or any storage it has unlimited storage unlimited storage fine what are the types of rds we have and no sql and no sql database we have in uh, rds yeah. my uh, aurora okay aurora is a mysql sir mm -hmm. postgre is also mysql okay sir. what are the no sql database mongodb and dynamodb is a no sql sir okay mm. fine um, next to uh, what is route 53 what are the policies of route 53 we have Route 53 is the front of a website uh, which gives domain uh, domain name system of a to our website. What is Route 53? What is uh, the cloud front? What is ACM? How we uh, use to get yes. all of this? So we integrate uh, Route 53, ACM, WAF, and uh, CDN, sir. These four will be the front of a website which gives a uh, utmost security and a very readability to our website name. Okay. Uh, ACM. And Route 53 are like uh, certificate managers where uh, it gives the domain validation options. Uh, that that means uh, it gives that we are the owners for the website name. Fine. Mm -hmm. ACM is uh, that's a, and a cloud distribution network. But, uh, mm, cloud cloud front, uh, which configures uh, geo locations and uh, cached data centers, where our uh, data in our website will be 
accessed uh, with low latency it helps us with it helps to access the data in our website with low latency low latency low latency ah. and waf uh, as as i have said before it acm acm waf waf is an application fine that's why that's, that's okay so next coming to the terraform so what is taint and untaint taint is a marking system where a resource if a resource is corrupt or uh, corrupted it can be destroyed and created when we hit apply okay every time we have hit apply mm -hmm. and terraform untainted to unmark the resources mm -hmm. so if we uh, give apply it will not be uh, destroyed and created fine so next uh, um, i lost my terraform state file yes sir to get that terraform state file back what i need to do what is the procedure i need to follow to get back the uh, lost terraform state file we can if the resources are create uh, are still there in our gui it's there yes we can uh, give terraform import command exactly okay we can get back our terraform okay file. so how it is useful terraform s3 backend s3 why, why it is useful uh, so uh, in a work culture where three uh, engineers are working on a single app Uh, application mm -hmm. is so if two engineers hit the terraform apply at a time mm -hmm. uh, it will throw an error so to overcome this and secure our uh, terraform state file mm -hmm. we use terraform backend sir it is uh, the terraform state file will be stored in terraform s3 uh, sorry s3 bucket or uh, of our aws account okay fine what are the blocks we have in terraform there are eight blocks in our terraform sir uh, they are resource block Okay. Provider block, uh -huh. uh, output block, okay. provisionary block, okay. data block, module block, Mod variable block, input block, output block. Coming to the Git. So, what is Git architecture? Git is a version distributed version control system, sir. Okay. It uh, monitors a file and tra it tracks the file. Uh -huh. Basically, it tracks the file uh -huh. with uh, IDs called commits, uh -huh. and it and github will uh, store our uh, code in a repositories what is git fetch and git uh, sorry git uh, um, revert git reset git uh, git revert is the command which undo a commit through a new commit sir it reverts the so if we give a revert uh, the file in the remote repository will okay. be reverted fine and fetch was what is different between fetch and pull git fetch fetches the uh, newly made changes in the branch okay whereas git pull will uh, fetch the new changes and merge the changes sir. okay okay fine so how do you invite some someone to your uh, github repository how do you invite someone to your github repository to invite a, uh, others to our repository we use collaborators option fine what happens when you uh, invite collaborators so uh, they can work on the sa our same repository and they can manipulate the code and make changes fine next what is jenkins architecture jenkins is a master slave architecture sir where uh, master will uh, commands the node uh, slave nodes to work on uh, integration of several tools okay um what are the types of uh, build triggers we have we have three types of build triggers sir okay they are uh, polsium mm -hmm. web hooks mm -hmm. and periodic periodic builds periodic builds fine uh, difference between this uh, so in periodic build we have to assign time and job we have to assign jobs or time to trigger builds and if there is a core change or not it will build a trigger okay uh, so in polsium only the code changes and at that time there should be cron job specified so uh, both condition has to be satisfied okay to build a trigger sir so in webhook we have to um, create a webhook in github where any push command will be, any commit changes the uh, trigger will be triggered thank you sir.